Well, hey everybody, it's Chuck. Welcome back to the apiary. Well, it is uh, getting to be the middle of November and I had made a video in a while. You know, beekeeping just kind of slows down in the fall while you're letting the fall flow. So in Jacksonville in zone 9B, our flow as measured by my scales this year was about two weeks earlier than last year. It was about September 15th to the middle of October. Let's just say October 15th. Hopefully I can stick a picture right here while I'm talking about it, how you can see the weight of the scales accumulating faster than the bees are eating it and then the taper off in the middle. That's our tiny little one month fall flow that we get here. Uh, mostly off the yellow flowers, think goldenrod, think uh, golden rain tree, think um, <sighs> privet. No, not privet, I'm sorry, primrose. I uh, got my peas mixed up. Um, yeah, and you know, a little bit of pollen and a little bit of uh, honey. I ended up pulling off my uh, second supers. Let me walk you through the apiary real quick and just kind of show you where we are. So I squeeze everything down to singles. Um, those halves on top are just a little bit of uncapped honey that I'm leaving on there before I give them any uh, heavy syrup if they need it. So these are essentially supers that are not capped. I'm just gonna let them finish off. And there are queen excluders in the middle in there of each of these. Um, so I got everything squeezed down to singles and my nukes are doing pretty good. Uh, not as many, I, you know, I've kind of taken the good from the bad. I've done mite checks on everything. Some of the mites are good, some of them are bad. So my uh, queen rearing uh, to be exclusively row resistant is hit or miss. So, you know, I got my winners and losers that we can use next year, um, you know, to breed from. And or uh, I'll probably still order some from Corey and uh, maybe Ryan also at Sourwood. I, those were my two favorites this year uh, that I got. But I had kind of a surprise here um, back behind my barn shed. I go by, here's the observation hive. You can see they're still going strong in and out. Um, but this swarm trap that I just happened to leave up yesterday, a swarm moved into. I just happened to be in the spot where I heard the buzz of the bees and uh, they moved in there and you can even see the foragers coming and going. Um, in one of my out yards, one of the hives had absconded. So I'm a little curious if that was my abscond coming over here or if it's a feral uh, hive, I don't know. But one thing is for sure, there's not enough nectar flow and pollen flow for that to survive. So what I'm gonna do today is we're gonna talk about what do you do with a late season swarm, if you want it. Um, I'm just gonna get the hive trap, or the swarm trap down. I'm gonna bring it down and take a look, see if I see a queen. If it's a virgin, it's a done, it, it's done deal. I'll just let the bees mix in with the other bees. But I'm gonna pull it down, we'll take a look at it, we'll see what's in there. I'm gonna give them some brood from another hive that I need to go through. And I'm gonna give them some honey from another hive. So essentially they've got uh, the resources uh, to get going through the winter. Um, and that all assumes there's any bees in there that are worth saving. Uh, meaning like any numbers, not just a tiny little softball. It looked like more bees than that, but. Okay, so let me uh, go ahead and put the, uh, the camera on the tripod and let's go uh, get that swarm trap. All right, y'all, you get a little bit of entertainment. Normally, I would be the first one to tell you that ladders and bees do not go together, but this, is only like a one stepper. And I've got my little door on here to kind of close them in. A couple foragers we're gonna lose, but uh, I'm able to just typically pull off these swarm traps off their nail and set it on my shoulder pretty straightforward and bring it on down. All right, everybody, let's see what we got here. I don't know if I left that clip in of me taking that uh, box down because the lid came off while it was coming down. Anyway, I'll probably leave it in there. I'm not trying to hide anything from you guys. Okay, so this is our swarm trap. I'm gonna have my queen cage out in case I find the queen. I will mark her if I see her just so I can keep track of super procedure and things like that. Um, and uh, here we go. One seam of bees is what it looks like, which is about what I expected. Got some ants in here. I just realized I don't have my glasses on for you guys. When I film sometimes and I can't see. And now I can see. Get this one frame out and make some room. 
some ants in here. Already got some nectar that they must have collected, otherwise this would have been robbed out. Beetles everywhere, so I need to get some beetle traps in here. I don't see the queen on that frame. Wow. All right, so something else is going on because I've got capped brood. I swear I saw this hive, and there's my queen. I'm going to show it to you. She's unmarked. So there's capped brood in here. So what I saw yesterday, I don't know what it was. Um, it looked like a swarm moving in, but there's a, maybe it was a failed abscond. Just a little bit of cat brood on here, but all right. So let me get a mark on her. I can usually get the wings with a gloved hand, but I cannot, I gotta hold the legs with an ungloved hand. So I don't know what her mite resistance is, but she's just gonna get them through winter. Can't make any queens. Tiny little colony that has the will to live, so we'll solve the queen problem in the spring. Um, little mark on there, she's good. Put the uh, put her in here while I manipulate this tiny little hive and get them some brood. Because I told you, remember, I need to get them some brood. What do you think? Yeah, there's beetles everywhere. I got to show you guys that up close too. Uh, a little hive like this will be overtaken by beetles. Um, can you see? Hold on, I got a bee in my sleeve already. It's stinging me. Can you see the beetles coming in and out of this? These cells? They're everywhere. They will take over. Um, My chlorine trinilopril traps worked with this with my master beekeeper experiment this summer. I'm writing out my paper. I've got to present it to the state. Uh, they seem to be pretty happy with my results. Um, so it is a option for managing. And these are just roaches. No more bees. Some got a lot of beetles in here though. Okay, we got our queen. We got a tiny little handful of bees. I'll call it two frames that they're working on that are there. So they need three frames to keep on going. So my plan is going to be to go to the Long Lang. Let me take you over there with me. And we'll check out the Long Lang and we'll look for some resources. You guys see me okay? I think you can. If there were more bees, I'd have checked beetles or mites in them, but there's just not enough to work with over there. Now in here, there's probably, I haven't gone through this to take off any honey for the winter. I don't want to, of course, give them my queen, so this is just a nice resource frame. No queen there. I'm going to go put it in the nuke right behind you, on the edge. Now, that's one nice good frame of food, but I need to give them some brood too. We'll let them work on that this next spring. There's mama here. You see her pink down here? Okay, so since I've got her, I'm gonna put her face this way and separate them by some frames. I can give any of these bees
shooting for an end frame with more food and a little bit of brood. Some pollen. Maybe I'll just give this one to him. All right, that's five. All right, these are some partial resource frames from some of the other hives I had that just weren't capped enough to take away. So I'm gonna just give it to this hive, replace those frames. All right, and this hive looks good. Let me just clean up a little bit of the rope stuff. All right, let me take you back over there and show you what we got. Okay, so this nice little uh, little swarm. Well, we got a viable queen. She's laying eggs. There's brood. She's now marked. Get her going back down into the seam here. There she goes. She had two tiny little patches of brood. I gave her and her hive a good uh, full frame of uh, brood, at least November type brood. It wasn't like solid, like spring brood. And then uh, two frames of food. So this hive is in a good position to succeed now. Um, that is what I would like to say you do with a winter swarm. Because they're not gonna survive on their own. Um, of course, taking notes is important. So I remember what this was. What would you guys write here? Today's date, 11-9, November swarm. Could have been an abscond. I'm gonna put mark blue and then the most important thing we do here is feed. Um, we gotta keep these guys happy, these ladies happy. So let's get a, uh, a jar feeder on here. This is not two to one yet, this is still one to one that I've mixed up. Arguably, I need to be using two to one. After this batch is gone, I will uh, go two to one to put on weight. So this is arguably not the right recipe, but for a tiny little swarm, they need something. Making sure my holes are not all closed up. Can you see through any of them? Ooh, too, too big. There we go. All right. Sorry to make you guys watch that. If your holes are properized up, they can't get the sugar water. So you got, need to kind of hold it up to the light so you can see if it's dripping. And of course the drops are a giveaway when you flip it over too. That's all I'm gonna say for today. Taking them down to singles. Got a tiny little abscond or a swarm put into a box. Get them through the winter with some brood and food have another mini colony we can requeen in the spring if the uh, nat nature, natural mite resistance in there, which I expect it won't be. And then that's kind of the situation. I do have all of my uh, winter honey in the, in the barn uh, waiting to be extracted when I get the energy to do that. And then uh, putting on feed and, and monitoring uh, for the weight, because guess what? It's middle of November. 
And that maple tree right behind you is going to start pushing pollen in January. We're six weeks away from that. That's unbelievable. So it's a short winter here, but uh, thanks for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Have a great day, everybody.